Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ Happening Live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. And everybody said, yeah. God bless everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Wonderful. Somebody there say, Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful to be in Sroleri tonight. And I pray that the blessing will flow from here and flow everywhere in Nigeria and Africa in Jesus name I'm so happy with those who are coming for the first time as you stood up I said wonderful so we have so many new people in Sri Lanka here and I believe it's like that in uh, many other places and you have heard about the retreat now all those who are coming for the first time where are you can you raise up your hand I'd like to see your hands again Thank you. You'll be my guest at DLCC. Yeah. And so please, uh, I'm expecting you and we're going to, you know, give you a special treat. And all those who are coming for the first time all over Lagos, I'm really preparing for you. Something will come in your life. Yeah. You'll never forget in Jesus' name. Yeah. And uh, you had a choir tonight. I'm telling you that when you get to DLCC, it has deeper life conference center other people call it campground the same thing they're going to minister to you in fact even without preaching the rains of blessing will come from heaven showers upon everyone and uh, i heard that uh, those who are taking uh, the, the WIAC exam that's the sss three students i said okay so you have started it's like uh, thank you brother for that information and um, you know get to that place and something comes upon your life yeah. and, you know sometimes students uh, i read but you know when it comes to do the exam my hand is shaking my brain is uh, you know whatever and i forget come and i'm going to inject something in your life yeah. this time our children will succeed yeah. And all the students, please come. Campus people come, youth, they come. And the parents release your children. Because this is going to be a special retreat. Conquering. Somebody wants to conquer. Where are you there? You'll conquer with the crucified Christ in Jesus' name. And so fathers and mothers and invitees and everybody, you have that card, you have that invitation, you're going to be there, and uh, I don't want to tell you too much, but you know, we're going to do that retreat in such a way that everything you have dreamt of, everything you have desired, and I'm talking about more and more. Somebody there, I said more and more. Even those who are going to be workers, who are sanitation, you know, choir, usher, security, they are at the post of duty. When the rain of showers of blessing, when it begins to fall, you'll never forget this one. We're going to be there. See, I'm going to be there. And the Lord will bless you beyond your imagination in Jesus' name. Once again, it's wonderful to be in Surulere. If you're part of the church over here, how wonderful it is. Once again, I need that word. Give it to me. Wonderful. wonderful. Wonders will never stop in your life. 
Raise up those hands and let me bless your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint all these hands in Jesus' name. Showers of blessing. Showers of anointing. That Lord, whatever they touch, every curse is cancelled in Jesus' name. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, mighty Jesus, come into every life tonight. I will pray that anything that should not be in our lives, roll everything away in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your people. Open our eyes of understanding tonight. Help us to behold wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessing in every life. Let this study be a benefit and profit to everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You can sit down, you are blessed already. As we come to the Bible study tonight, we're looking at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 22. John chapter 3. We're looking at verse 22. It says, After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried for them and baptized. Stay there for a moment. It tells us after these things, you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ had been making very clear, very plain, revealed to the people about the way of salvation. Nicodemus had come at the beginning of the chapter and he told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was kind of perplexed and confused and he said, how can this be? And Jesus emphasized again, very day, very day, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, that's the word of God, the word of life, and of the spirit, that's the Holy Ghost that comes to renew our lives, except that happens, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that is, you know how weak the flesh is and you know how vulnerable the flesh is it says if you are born only once you are born of the flesh you are flesh you may take that flesh and carry it to a synagogue it is still flesh you may carry that flesh may take it to a temple it is still flesh and you may take that uh, flesh and take it overseas. It is still flesh because that which is born of the flesh is, is flesh. The flesh is weak. The flesh is sensual. The flesh is sinful. And the flesh is carnal. And the flesh is vulnerable. And the flesh cannot have victory. And then he invited the Hema to his second birth. And he said, whatsoever, whosoever is born of the spirit is spirit. It becomes spiritual. And the strength of God comes to you. There's a conversion. There's a transformation. And Jesus Christ emphasized that newness of life that they will follow him. It's not only Nicodemus. Other people have hurt you. And then those who sincerely believed were baptized. Look at that verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. After all that discussion. After all that explanation, after all that revelation, after all that teaching, he now came to another situation, another place in the nation. And then it says, and there he tarried with them. When he tarried with them, what was he doing? He was still teaching them. And as he taught them, there were people that believed. There were people that repented. And he baptized them. That is through those disciples, they were baptized. As they were baptized, these were people that were genuine. Now Jesus Christ noticed something. And we need to notice that too. It's not everybody that had Jesus Christ that responded properly. Some of them responded with a superficial kind of faith. And I believe, I believe, I believe. And we're told, look at John chapter 2, reading from verse 23. It says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw his miracles which he did but jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and he needed not that any any should testify of man for he knew what was in man what what that means is this there were people that claimed to believe 
we believe we believe but there is something that will show how genuine how real how dependable how foundational that uh, genuine that uh, salvation is or that belief is there were people that said i believe but their hearts were not transformed I believe, but their lives were not changed. I believe, and they were still doing the same thing they ever did, going the same way they ever went. And it said, Jesus did not commit himself unto them. They were merely religious. They were merely religious. We've been waiting for the Messiah. And that's the Messiah. He will give us this. He will give us that. And because of that expectation, I believe, I believe. And Jesus said, uh-uh, that's not it. Let me show you what it really means to believe. We're looking at what he had told them. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 12. Matthew chapter 4. Tell me your verse there chapter 4 verse 12 it says now when jesus had heard that john was cast into prison he departed into galilee and leaving nazareth he came and dwelt in capernaum which is upon the sea coast and in the borders of zebulun and naphtali that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zeus the prophet saying the land of zabulon and the land of naphtali by the way of the sea beyond jordan galilee of the gentiles then it says the people which start in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and shadow of that light is sprung up Look at this now from that time. Jesus began to preach and to say, tell me, repent for the kingdom of heaven is Satan. You see that he expected the people that if you know that this is the Messiah, this is the Christ, and now he has come, you will go beyond religion. You will go beyond superficiality. You will go beyond the works of the flesh. It says, repent for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. As Matthew emphasized what Jesus said, Mark also emphasized, look at Mark. Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verses 14 and 15. Mark chapter 1. Verse 14, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Look at this and saying the time is fulfilled. It's like your time of blessing is fulfilled. Your time has come. Say my time has come. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Tell me the rest. Repent ye and believe the gospel you know what there were people that they listen to that repent ye and tell me believe the gospel they jumped the kill the gate crashed they jumped over the fence they forgot repent ye and then just came to i believe i believe and jesus said ah you're jumping the kill you're jumping the fence you're gate crashing didn't you hear everything i said i said number one repent ye Number two, believe the gospel. That's why those people said, I believe, I believe. And Jesus will not commit himself unto them because they were not going the right direction, step after step, repent ye, and then believe the gospel. Look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, and here we're reading from verse 32. Luke chapter 5, Matthew said it. Mark said it. Luke is not going to tell us what Jesus said. In Luke chapter 5, verse 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so you understand, it's not just I believe, I believe, I believe. You will repent. And as they repented, then it tells us that the people who responded well, and the people who took step one, repent, step two, believe, it says they were being baptized. They were being baptized in water. We're coming back to John chapter three. John chapter three. And now we have verse 22. After these things came, Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them. And what did he do? And baptized. And baptized. That is, those who responded with the heart. 
those who responded with inner conviction, those who responded with sincere repentance, those who responded with unwavering faith were baptized, and as they were baptized, another thing happened now. The disciples of John, those who are following John, and then the Jewish people, religious people, they began to discuss. And instead of thinking about their soul, instead of thinking about the eternity, instead of thinking about the message, what did John the Baptist preach? John the Baptist said, repent and bring forth works good for repentance. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, repent and believe in the gospel. Instead of saying, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. John the Baptist is saying, repent. Jesus is saying, repent. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. It's like the town crier. It's like the herald that is running ahead of the king. And he said, repent, repent. The king has come and the kingdom of God is now at hand. And now the king arrived and Jesus said, repent and believe ye the gospel. Instead of listening to the message and saying, John said it, Jesus said it, the two of them said it, truth is confirmed, let us repent. They now started talking about Oh, look at this. Who is greater? They began to make unnecessary comparison. Let's come now to verse 23. And John also was baptizing in an honor near Salim because there was much water there. And they came and they came and were baptized. And John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question uh, between some of of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying and they came unto John and said unto him listen to this rabbi teacher master preacher he that was with thee beyond Jordan to whom thou bearest witness behold the same baptizeth and all men come to him that was their problem all men come to him. You know what they wanted to do? They wanted to create jealousy and envy in the heart of John. And then to divert himself away from his message, instead of continuing, repent ye and believe the gospel, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. They wanted to create that kind of envy to say, that person you spoke about, and then you told the people that somebody is coming after you. Do you know what? He's baptizing people and all men are coming to him. And here is now what John, thank God for John. And thank God for you. I say thank God for you. You'll have the same heart in Jesus' name. And John answered in verse 27 and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that has the bride is the bridegroom, and but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Instead of having jealousy and envy, he had humility, said, I'm happy. Thank God. My ministry is fulfilled because now this Jesus Christ, the bridegroom of the bride, is collecting the bride together. And I praise God for that. And because of that, my joy is fulfilled. Vastachi, everybody will read this together. Vastachi, one, two, three, go. Must be great, but I must be Say that again. Must be great, but I must be Say that with grace in your heart. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase. Not only that, I must. Is com I'm compelled to decrease. I want to decrease. I desire to decrease. There is a must in me. I want to become nothing so that Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, will become everything. And I pray that that same heart, the Lord will give it to you in Jesus' name. That's why tonight, the study is the preeminence of Christ. 
the preeminence of Christ. As we look at the whole uh, passage we're looking at tonight, the three points we're looking at. Number one, the humble expression of John. The humble expression of John. Number two, the heavenly exaltation of Jesus. The heavenly exaltation of Jesus. He came from heaven and is exalted by heaven. It's the Father himself that has exalted him and given me name above of every name that at the mention of the name of Jesus every knee must bow the heavenly exaltation of Jesus point number three look at this one now the happy or the hopeless eternity after judgment there are two things here number one is the happy eternity after judgment number two is the hopeless eternity after judgment we put all that together and we say the happy or the hopeless eternity after judgment we're coming to number one tell me number one the humble expression of john we're coming to chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 22 chapter 3 of john verse 22 it says after these things came jesus and his disciples into the land of judea and there he tarried with them and baptized before we go on look at the ministry of jesus he came to a particular place he tarried there and converts were one. He still tarried there. He supervised. He discipled. He followed up the people. He taught the people. And as he saw that they had really genuinely repented, he baptized. You know, some people have the ministry of hit and go, hit and go. They, they jump here now, they preach. They don't see any result. They jump here, they preach. They jump here, they preach. But you know what? Jesus tarried there. And he saw disciples, he saw converts, and he matured them, he qualified them, and he baptized. The same thing with us. We're following after Jesus Christ. When he gives us a ministry, and he gives us something to do, instead of, you know, just hopping and hopping and hopping, going everywhere, because, you know, we did it yesterday, we're not even waiting for the rain to come on what we are planted, for the sun to shine on what we are planted, and for the Spirit of God to breathe on what we are planted, because we have not seen a result. One day, two days, we go to another place, we get there, and again, we're in a hurry, we're impatient, and then we leave that place again it's like somebody you plant something and you didn't see any fruit then you put it then you plant it there after two days you put it plant it over there after one week or put it will that person be able to get results no because it's impatient why are you not patient or you're not patient anything we do in life you tarry there you stay there you wait there you do it until you are going to get result i see people who are going to get result here tonight and so he baptized them then look at it, verse 23 and john also was baptizing in and on near Salim, because there was much water there and they came and they were baptized look at that again it says john jesus was doing the work and john also was doing the work after all they were saying the same thing after all they were preaching the same thing after all they were both concerned about the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven and there's no competition but there is a complementary ministry. This ministry complements that ministry. This ministry supports that ministry. No contradiction and no opposition and there is no conflict. And so he went on. John was doing the ministry. As I am serving the Lord, you will serve the Lord. As God is blessing my ministry, he will bless your ministry. We complement each other. We support each other so that you and I, as we unite together, we get the victory and we get the success and fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Like father, like children, you'll be fruitful. 
the Lord will bless the work of your hand. And then you see, it says, because there was much water there, much water there, and was baptizing. You know what that says? Water baptism is by immersion. Immersion. If it is by making a cross, and of the cross on the forehead, you don't need much water there. All you need to do is just have a bowl of water, and then you sprinkle on people, and you make a sign of the cross. No, but that's not baptism. Baptism to be buried with him in the watery grave. That he is the old man is dead a new life is now come and to demonstrate that that's what what water baptism does and you immerse the convert in water and you bring him out to rise up in newness of life that's why it says there was much water there and uh, he was uh, baptizing people look at john chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 john chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 and when therefore the lord knew how the uh, pharisees had heard that jesus made and baptized tell me more disciples than john though jesus himself baptized not but tell me his disciples but his disciples look up here isn't it wonderful actually it's the disciples that were doing the baptism and they but the comment of the bible is jesus baptized them wonderful that the work you do is not just credited to you heaven says jesus look at your work your work is the work of jesus your success is the success of Jesus. Your productivity is the productivity of Jesus. Actually, Jesus just stood there and then he preached the word and the people repented and as they repented, he said, and they believed. He said, you're qualified for baptism. Qualified for baptism. Qualified for baptism. And then the people said, can we be baptized now? Jesus, baptize me yourself. He said, Peter, baptize him. No, I want you to do it. Once Peter has done it, I have done it. Once John has done it, you know, Jesus has done it. What you are doing, Jesus is doing it. You are standing for Jesus. You are representing Jesus. And this work will prosper in your hands in Jesus' name. We come to chapter 3 now. And I'm reading from verse 25. John chapter 3. Verse 25, then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, they were talking about it to Jesus Christ and they called him master. They said, Rabbi, the, 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 the the person that uh, you uh, made a testimony about beyond Jordan, to whom that bears witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and tell me, all men come to him. All men come to him. I told you already, they wanted to bring up jealousy in the heart. You know, carnal comparison, human comparison is doing that. And he came after me, and I started, you know, before him. And now he's baptizing more people. And John did not look at that. John did not look at that direction. But the people said, look at this man. He's just walking and walking. And that person he introduced, and that person he brought in, that person he publicized, all the people now are going to him. And they came to him, and they said, John, have you, have you heard? Do you know that that person you introduced, Jesus Christ, is uh, baptizing and actually more people are going to him than coming to you? Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. Very important for you to open the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. What is the verse? Verse 4, chapter 4, verse 4. Again, I consider all travail and every right work. Remember, Jesus was doing the right work and John was doing the right work. And every right work that for this a man is envied of his neighbor. 
a man is envied of his neighbor. Jesus was doing the work, and John was doing the work, and there were people that wanted to bring a kind of cleavage between them, division between them, envy in the heart of John, jealousy in the heart of John. They wanted to stir up the dusty remains of carnality and depravity. What I mean by that is, you know, sometimes when the ground is very dusty, and as the ground is dusty, and without wetting the ground, you just take broom and you are sweeping. The doors will be coming up and flying here and there. And if somebody has asthma, the person can have an attack, attack of asthma because of that dust. The same thing spiritually. When the dust of carnality and the envy and depravity is coming up, you know, this one is jealous of that and that one is envious of that. You can have spiritual asthma that, you know, to breathe and to live and to minister and to fellowship becomes a problem. But thank God for John. I pray God will give us the heart of John in Jesus' name. Even greater than that, he'll give us the mind of Christ. We're coming to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 27. J John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. What John was saying is, You'll not make me jealous. You'll not make me envious. Nobody will make you jealous. You see, there are people, when they become jealous and envious like that, they begin to do some things that will ruin their lives. Even the good thing they have tried to do, that another person is coming and doing greater things they're doing, uh, then even the good things they are doing, they spoil everything. Your work will not be spoiled. Your ministry will not be spoiled. The good thing you're doing, envy, jealousy of other people, will not cancel your reward in Jesus' name. And, and here is the secret. Look at what John said. John said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. What he meant is this. He said, if I have ten converts, that's all heaven has given me. And, I'm, and I rejoice. God doesn't make a mistake. And all that God has given me, I accept with gratitude. And if he is having a hundred, five hundred, one thousand, when I have only ten, that's what heaven has given him. Him, and whatever heaven has given him, I rejoice because I trust in the wisdom of heaven, in the wisdom of God. God has the wisdom, is giving me this much, thank you, Lord. And God has the wisdom, is giving him this much, thank you, Lord. I'm grateful for everything. When you look at the talent of God in your life, Lord, I'm grateful. This is all you have given me from heaven. When you look at your productivity, at your ministry, and this is your success, Lord, I thank you. This is what God has given me from heaven. And when you look at my brother there, you look at my sister there, look at what uh, you know he's doing look at what she's doing there's no jealousy because that's what god has given her from heaven that's what god has given him from heaven and if we have that mind that nobody can receive anything except to be given him from heaven you'll have peace of mind you'll have rest in your soul and the peace of mind there'll be no blood pressure and there'll be no uh, kind of uh, problem in your life and you'll be going on happy and healthy and holy and heavenly minded in Jesus name. And let's come to verse 28. He yourselves bear me witness that I said what he had said before and they were forgetting. He wants to tell them again I am not the Christ but I am sent before him. He said I, he publicized it now. He said okay I see that you have not recorded that in your heart and you have not put that down. That's why you are coming to me thinking I'm good to be jealous and if you have not if you don't say the real truth and let the people know that you are, you are not a man for jealousy and for envy if you don't let them know they'll be coming back and troubling you with unnecessary information to make you jealous but you'll tell them Jesus is all in all Jesus is supreme Jesus is greater than man and I surrender, I submit everything to him. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 25. Acts chapter 13 verse 25 and as John fulfilled his cause, you'll fulfill your ministry. Your life will not end midway. 
No accident will stop your journey in Jesus' name. And as John fulfilled his cause, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. He made it clear. And then it was now recorded. And this is Paul the Apostle. That time Saul was not even, uh, he wasn't converted yet. It was after he became converted, he became Paul. But before he got converted, John had said what he said. And he said it publicly. And it was recorded. Look at this. He said, I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet i am not worthy to lose he said it and now it was recorded everything was final from this time now nobody came to him to bring up jealousy and to bring up envy and to say do you know do you know do you know i know that already he got it from heaven and i got mine from heaven and you got yours from where i said you got yours from where and what you've got is good for you. What I've got is good for me. And what we have got is good for each of us in Jesus' name. We're coming to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 29. It says, And he that has the bride is the bridegroom. And, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. He referred to Jesus Christ as the bridegroom. I mean, the church as the bride. We're looking at um, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 25. Jesus is the bridegroom. And we, the church, the bride. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that ye might sanctify and cleanse ye to the washing of water by the word, that ye might present ye to himself a glorious church. You will be part of that church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 16. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. It tells us in verse 16, for by him were all things created. That's why John said he must increase and I must decrease. He said we're not of the same level. I am, in fact, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and to loosen you know, the lashes of his shoe. He is creator. He is the almighty. He says, but, but for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that, in the, and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have, tell me, in all things, you might have, tell me out loud, you might have the preeminence. That's why we call this the preeminence of Christ. You see, without an abiding experience of sanctification, John, John's reaction would have revealed a manifestation of carnal competition. When they came to him and they said, the man you spoke about and you bore witness to him is baptizing people. And look at him. He's baptizing more people than you are baptizing. And all people are going to him. But because there were no remains of carnality, no remains of a kind of a depravity, there was no manifestation of carnal competition, no envy, no jealousy, no pride. What did he have? As you look at the response and the reaction of John, and you see the expression of his humility. Number one, we see genuine humility. Not fake humility. 
and it is not uh, you know sometimes sometimes people will act out uh, uh, humility outwardly but internally there's uh, jealousy and envy not john there was number one uh, genuine humility number two of pretending humility there's no pretense in john he just said but i told you but i said so before that he is greater than i am he is from above i am from here and you understand he created all things by him all things are made there is nothing made that was not made by him you cannot compare us i am human he is divine there's no there's no pretend on um, pretense on pretending humility number three sincere humility and what is said in the public said in private what he felt inside him that's what he told his followers because there was sincere humility there was transparent humility you can see through him you know when somebody talks and he's uh, and he's transparent you can tell and you don't have to tell him to swear you don't have to tell him to make an oath because you know he's completely sincere and transparent he had open humility open humility said you can you know if it were possible to operate on me and then to slash my heart open and see inside me you will see that it's from the death of my heart i'm talking because he had open humility he had heartless humility not heart but heartless a r t that is this is not theater this is not uh, you know drama this is not something we just put on you know there are people that are kind of uh, they can dramatize if they want to cry they can cry and shed tears but it's practice if they want to laugh you know, uh, they stop they started crying now and then you will see the tears and then they want to change immediately it is by training because that's the their dramatic kind of thing they start laughing hilariously but in the case of a john there is this is heartless kind of humility there's no pretense there's no arch there's no uh, theater arch there's no whatever it is uh, just sincere he had spontaneous humility when they spoke to him and they said do you know the person that you you know you introduce and you talk about him to everybody is this and that not spontaneously spontaneously because this was his nature this was his heart this was his life and then he had pure humility there's no there's no color in here and there's nothing here that will show that you know it's trying to paint a picture this is pure this is unfeigned unfeigned humility and because of that he just told them straight he said i told you before and i'm going to tell you something else i didn't say before he must increase and tell me the rest i must decrease you want christ to increase in your life to increase in your family you want his glory to increase in your life and you just want to say on the side of john and say john you know what that same grace the lord has given you and you want christ to increase and you yourself to decrease i want that same grace and the lord will give it to you in jesus name humility is very important we're looking at a proverbs chapter 20 proverbs uh, chapter 15 in proverbs chapter 15 and here we're reading from verse 33 proverbs chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 33 the fear of the lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility before honor is humility proverbs chapter 29 proverbs chapter 29 and we're looking at verse 23 proverbs 29 verse 23 here it says a man's pride shall bring him low I pray that pride will not bring you low. Pride will not destroy you. But humility will raise you up. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. We're coming to Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 8. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. It says... He has showed thee, O man, and O woman too, brothers and sisters, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to, tell me, walk humbly with thy God. God will give us that humility. Matthew chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 18, reading from verse 1. 
at that time at the time at the time at the same time came the disciples unto jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven that's what you should never never think about who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven look up here for a moment it's like you know coming uh, to somebody who has uh, scientific knowledge and uh, you're saying uh, tell me what's the greatest part of my body my eyes my ears my mouth which one is the greatest my hands my feet which one is the greatest my bone or my flesh which one is the greatest why are you asking a question like that if he tells you the your eyes are the greatest do you want him to cut off your hand because that one is not great but if he tells you your hands are the greatest do you want him to you know pluck out your eyes because those ones are not great if he tells you that your flesh is uh, the greatest one part of your body do you want him to crush your bones everyone is important in sight of god you're important in sight of god your ministry is important in sight of God. And your place in society, nobody can replace you. I said nobody can replace you. It is not about who is the greatest in the kingdom of God. It is that, thank God, he has chosen me. Somebody there, he has chosen you. Are you chosen? I said, are you chosen? I can't hear our people. God bless you. You are chosen in Jesus' name. And so, and so they were asking, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become, tell me, as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now look at verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven i pray god will give every one of us without ex exception the grace of humility in jesus name now we come to point number two we're looking at the heavenly exaltation of jesus the heavenly exaltation of jesus we're coming to john chapter 3 and we're reading from the start to one john chapter 3 and we're reading from the start to one he that coming from above is above all here is john still talking and those people that came to him and they wanted to you know stir up jealousy and stir up envy and stir up some negative depraved emotion in him they were still standing there and now he was going to tell them about jesus you will exalt jesus it says he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth and then he says he that cometh from heaven again he emphasized is above all if you look at uh, the beginning of uh, verse 31 it says he that cometh from above tell me is above all if you come to the latter part of uh, verse 31 he that cometh from heaven tell me it's above all. He repeated it. He wanted them to understand. Because he's talking about Jesus, the Lamb of God. It's above everyone. He's the only begotten Son of God. It's above everyone. It's the brightness of the Father's glory. It's above everyone. It's the express image of God. And it's the Alpha and the Omega. It's the first and the last. It's the living Word of God. He is above all. This Jesus we're talking about is our savior the only savior is above all no other person can save us is our sanctifier the only sanctifier is above all is the chief cornerstone is the baptizer in the holy ghost nobody like him is the head of the church is the bridegroom of the bride is the bread of life that's why it says he is above all is the son of righteousness is the way the truth and the life and there's nobody that qualifies to be like that they Therefore, he is above all, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he'll be raised of faith in your heart in Jesus' name. And then he is the king of glory. Because of all this, he is above all. Look at that verse again. I'm reading from chapter 3. What's the verse? Verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. 
And he that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all, is above all angels in heaven. It's above all saints in glory. It's above all men on the earth. It's above all kings in all generations. It's above all philosophers in history. It's above all judges that ever live, that ever will live. It's above all principalities, all powers, all authority, all, all, all. This Jesus is above all. And he's your savior. He's your redeemer. Is the one that died for you. Is the one that says, if you come to me today because I'm above all, once you come to Christ today, judgment is cancelled out of your life. And once he says, yes, concerning your life, even Satan cannot say no. Demons cannot say no. Because he is above all, exalt him in your life. Because that heavenly exaltation has been given to him. And once you agree with heaven and you say, yes, I know that Jesus Christ is above all. And I surrender my life completely unto him. All those evil things, they are cleared out of your life from tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 20 and verse 21. Ephesians chapter 1, look at verse 20. It says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places you see above all that's the highest you could be and that's the highest place uh, christ uh, went to far above far above far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come he is above all i said he is above all in the philippians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 9 philippians chapter 2 verse 9 wherefore god has highly exalted him not only exalted him how did he exalt him highly highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He is above all. I said he is above all. First Peter, First Peter chapter 3, First Peter chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 22. First Peter chapter 3 reading from verse 22 who is gone into heaven where's jesus now where's your savior now what's he doing there he's preparing a place for you and you'll be there who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of god look at this angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him that is, they all submit unto him. We're coming back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And here, we're reading from verse 32. John chapter 3, we're now in verse 32. In John chapter 3, verse 32, it says, And what he has seen and heard, he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He's saying that uh, what he's preaching, he brought his message from heaven. And because he brought his message from heaven, the people here on earth, it's like they don't appreciate the gift of God and the message that he's giving. Look at verse 11. That's in chapter 3, verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we do we have seen and ye receive not our witness if you compare what jesus said in verse 11 and what john said in verse 32 exactly the same wouldn't it be wonderful that in your life you will never contradict jesus your message will never contradict the message of Jesus. In fact, when you are witnessing, when you are doing so when, when you are talking to another person, you'll be asking yourself, am I saying what Jesus would have said if Jesus were here? When you are preaching, am I saying what Jesus would have said if Jesus were here? Because exactly what Jesus had said in verse 11, look at this now, John was saying in verse 32, because he said, 
he must increase and I must decrease. If I contradict him, then I'm not supporting what I've said. If I oppose him, if I see anything different, it means I'm pointing attention to myself and I'm pointing attention away from him. And he said exactly what Jesus had said. You know, my joy for you tonight is that you'll become more and more like Jesus. Your life more and more like Jesus. Your message more and more like Jesus. And your influence on people and your revelation to people will be the revelation of Christ in Jesus' name. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, he that has received his testimony has said to his seal that God is true. He was, in, he was not talking about his own message now. He was talking about the message of Jesus. He said, if you receive his testimony, if you receive his instruction, if you receive his revelation, you are saying that God is true. Because everything Jesus was saying, it was God that gave that to him. We're looking at a John chapter 5. John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 20. John chapter 5, and we're looking at verse, tell me, verse 20. In John chapter 5 verse 20, for the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. It says, because the Father loves Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, he has shown him everything, everything, everything that he does, and then he will show him greater works than these that he may marvel, and then believe. We're coming to John chapter 8 and verse 26. John chapter 8 verse 26. It says, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things that I have heard of him. That's Jesus talking. Jesus is saying, what my father gave me, that's what I'm telling you. What my father revealed, that's what I'm telling you. What my father taught me, that's what I am telling you. I pray we'll have the mind of Christ. You will have the mind of Christ. And every time you say, I just want to say what the Heavenly Father has revealed unto me. And what the Heavenly Father has given unto me. We're looking at John chapter 8 and verse 28. John chapter 8 verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. He is the Savior. I am he is a sanctifier. I am he is the final sacrifice. I am he is the redeemer. He said, you'll know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself. Look at that. I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things. If you can commit yourself to the Lord tonight, that I will be like Jesus. I said, you'll be like Jesus. And then you say, I do nothing, I say nothing, I go nowhere, I don't do anything except what the Heavenly Father has revealed unto me. I'm coming to John chapter 3, verse 34. Look at verse 34 now. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. It's still John talking. And John telling the people, he whom God has sent speaketh the word of God. And uh, look up here for a moment. You can tell who has sent uh, some people. When some people, when they are talking, they are quoting philosopher. They say, according to philosopher so and so. According to philosopher so and so. And they want to show us that they have it out. Socrates about Plato. And that's who has sent them. Because it is who sent you that you speak his word. But if you say, according According to the Bible, according to the word of God, according to what is written in Matthew or in Mark or in John, then we know God has sent you because you are quoting the word of God, you are teaching the word of God, you are explaining the word of God, and you are saying, according to this, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. And how we say that man is sent of God because he's quoting the word of God. He says, Follow the Lord as you follow him, don't look away from him. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. That man is sent of God. Because he's speaking the word of God. Look at that verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. What words are you going to speak? Who sent you? I said who sent you? Who are you going to be faithful to? 
God will help you in Jesus' name. And look at verse 34, the second part. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. That means the Lord gave him the Spirit abundantly. Give him the Spirit without measure unto him. And uh, this, uh, look at verse 35. The Father loveth the Son and has given all things into his hand. The father loveth the son, and he has given, how many things? All things unto him. Look at Luke. Luke chapter 10. The father loveth the son, and has given him all things. All things into his hand. Chapter 10 of Luke. I'm reading from verse 22. Look at verse 22. All things are delivered unto me of the father. All things. And thank God, you have also been delivered unto Jesus. God has given you to Jesus as a convert of Jesus, as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple of Jesus. And since the Father has so ordained, and the Father has so said, I created you. The way you can have the best in your life, I'm going to give you as a gift to my only begotten son. And then you say, now I belong to Jesus. Somebody there, I belong to Jesus. Somebody there, say it aloud, I belong to Jesus. Let the angels hear you the way you say it. He will never leave you. And you'll never leave him. And until you finish here and then get home in glory, you'll keep on following the Lord in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. The happy or the hopeless eternity after judgment. Point number three. Point number three. The happy or the hopeless eternity after judgment. We're coming to John chapter three. And we're reading from verse 36. John chapter three. And I'm reading from verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life that's the first part that's the first part after judgment after death that's the happy eternity happy eternity and those who will be happy in eternity there's one thing to do you quit your sin you leave your sin you forsake your sin and believe on the lord jesus christ he that believeth on the son has everlasting life look at the other side the hopeless eternity after judgment that is it now he that believeth not the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Look at those two sides. On this side, they believe. That's where I belong. I said that's where I belong. Because when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have everlasting life, eternal life. You'll be happy forever, forever in eternity after the day of judgment. But those who do not believe, you'll not be on that side. I said you'll not be on that side. Those who do not believe, there's the wrath of God upon them. And they are the people that have a hopeless eternity after judgment. Let's look at the first part. The, uh, what's the first part? Happy what? Happy eternity. We're looking at John. We're looking at John chapter 3, verse 15. Look at verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life that's what you'll have for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and then we're coming to john chapter 5 verse 24 john chapter 5 and verse 24 look at verse 24 verily verily i say unto you he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath what everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life the moment you give your life to jesus christ and you say lord jesus i believe you died for me and i give my life to you and i will never leave you i'll never forsake you i'll not backslide i'm going to remain with you on that until that final day eternal life comes everlasting life comes and then when christ comes he'll take you to heaven you're going to have a happy eternity in jesus name we're looking at first john first john first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 look at verse 11 first john chapter 5 verse 11 
And this is the record that God has given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This is the record. It will be recorded in heaven. If you give your life to the Lord Jesus, if you have given your life to the Lord Jesus, your name is in the book of life. You have gone on record. That those who believe, they have eternal life, everlasting life. And look at verse 12. He that has, he that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, shall not have life. Then he goes on in verse 13. These things are by reaching unto you. That believe on the name of the son of god that she may know that she have what do you have eternal life and that she may believe on the name of the son of god look at verse 20 in verse 20 and we know that the son of god is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and that we are in him that is true even in his son jesus christ this is the true god and tell me eternal life we're coming back to john chapter 3 john chapter 3 here now we're reading the second part of verse 36. John chapter 3, second part of verse 36. It says, And uh, he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Look up here for a moment, you know. We came to the Bible study not just to tease our brain, not just to read so many verses of the Bible. And it's not just to, you know, be like all those people that heard and then they did nothing about it and, uh, you know, they didn't believe. But we came so that we will escape the judgment of God. Will escape the wrath of God. Will escape all that perdition that is going to come upon unbelievers. Because I can see you tonight, you'll be a believer. I said you're a believer. You believe that Jesus died for you. And then you hold on to him and you say, Lord, I will not live. Because I know that there is the only name, the sweetest name you'll ever hear, the most precious name you'll ever hear, and the most significant name you'll ever, ever hear, the name of Jesus, our Savior. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved but the people who believe not will still have to tell the truth because the bible says those who do not believe they will not see life they will not have life and the wrath of god abides in them look at john chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 18 john chapter 3 verse 18 it says he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not he that believeth not, Jesus is Savior, he believeth not. Jesus is a Redeemer, he believeth not. Jesus died for us, he believeth not. He does not accept that personally and say, yes, that is mine. It's not just to believe history. It's not just, a, yes, I've heard about it and I know that Jesus died some time ago on the cross of Calvary. No. You make it personal that Jesus did this for you and Jesus died for you. If you don't do that, it says, He that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We're looking at John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. John chapter 5, verses 28 and uh, 29 marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life that will be where you belong then it says, and they that have done evil, those who refuse to believe, and those who refuse to have a change of life, a change of heart, and to become new creatures, it says they come unto the resurrection of damnation. Damnation, the wrath of God coming upon them. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 1, we're reading from verse, tell me from verse 18. In Romans chapter 1 verse 18 it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. 
against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Those who hear the truth and they hold that truth, but they hold it in unrighteousness. Instead of believing, giving their lives to the Lord, they do not do that. But you know, as you say, I'm not going to perish. I'm not going to have the wrath of God upon me. And you believe tonight, eternal life will come to you salvation will come to you he that believeth on the son of god has everlasting life he that believeth not shall not see life the wrath of god abides on him daniel chapter 12 daniel chapter 12 in daniel chapter 12 look at verse 2 daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to some to tell me everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content where do you belong i said where do you belong you'll be there i said you'll be there nothing will hinder you in jesus name some to everlasting life, those who believe, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now go to verse 3. It says in verse 3, and they that be wise, are there wise people here tonight? Wise people here tonight? Those who are wise will make the right choice. Those who are foolish, they are not here tonight. I said those who are foolish, they are not, it's not you. Are you foolish? Are you wise? You make the right choice. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness, tell me, as the stars forever and ever. Forever and ever. There's a happy eternity awaiting us. But there's a hopeless eternity awaiting some. To believe on the one hand or not to believe on the other hand. To follow Christ on the one hand or to forsake Christ on the other hand. To abide in Christ on the one hand or to abscond. To just go away and to backslide and never come back. To be saved on the one hand or to remain sinful on the other hand. To be humble on the one hand or to be proud on the other hand. The choice is yours. You are going to make the right choice. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the right choice. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I'm reading here from verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And we're looking at verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. One side is there life and good. The other side is there death and evil one side is there everlasting life the other side is there it is the wrath of god one side is there happiness forever and the other side is there hopelessness forever look at verse 19 in verse 19 i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have said before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life i choose life I choose eternal life. I choose everlasting life. I choose the Savior. I choose to believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I repent. Take all my sins away. I hold on to Christ. He is my Savior. It says, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. I see life on your right eye there. I see eternal life on you right there. Amen. You are wise. Amen. Wise people, are you there? Yes. Rise up and tell the Lord. Lord, I want to be wise and remain wise. Wise and remain wise. I will not perish. No, you will not perish. Eternal life is yours. Eternal life is yours. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you've never done it before, just tell the Lord now, Lord, I choose life. Tell the Lord, Lord, I choose life. Lord, I choose life. Lord, I choose life. Lord, I choose life. Jesus is my savior from tonight. I come to Christ tonight. I give myself to Christ tonight. I'll never leave him. 
I'll never forsake him. I believe Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him an eternal life is yours.